Hello and welcome, dearest. I'm Grandma Mimsy, and I'm gonna try today. I'm gonna try and get through this. The screaming heebie-jeebies are out there, and no, I'm not trying to be a part of the Misery Loves Company Club. I I'm just gonna say this up front: that yeah, my oldest is 40, and the youngest is 32. So in the process of that, when I don't know, I want to say my little one was maybe two or three and the oldest was I don't know, around 10 so somewhere in that timeline uh, she had won uh, some award thingy at school student of the week or something and so me and my best friend who's like my sister took the kids to go to a local buffet and got the kids sat at a table and I was gonna go off and get a plate for the little one and basically said just sit here because if she came back with food and there wasn't any for him it would be chaos and so it was just let me just grab something really quick and then you could go have what you wanted and um, the oldest a lot of times well both of them they like foods that didn't always have the best reactions with them so there was a lot of things that it was like for health wise and you know for her well-being it was no you can't have those but today it was like go get what you want i'm not going to fight you with you know restrictions on anything you smorgasbord is your friend go enjoy and she started giving me some grief and it was just a little with my fingers just like this you know on her cheek because i was up close and personal it was like knock it off i mean stop it with this attitude i understand you know you it's your special day but doggone it that doesn't give you reason to mouth back to me and be disrespectful and some woman in the restaurant was all i'm gonna call cps and this that and everything and that's not how you treat a child and blah blah blah, blah. and it'd be like you know what this is in the day and age where we didn't have cell phones and there's a payphone in the lobby it's like i'll give you the dime go make the phone call because there's a lot i had been through with this child uh, over a lot of issues, uh, custody and various other things that were just belief beyond belief. And it's like, you want to come down on me and tell me I'm a bad mom with everything I've been having to go through for, with this kid. You weren't here raising her. So don't tell me how to raise my kid. Um, because I was a hands-on parent. And at the same time, there was a, an incident, uh, like, two or three days later that I'm in the grocery store usually when my kids are misbehaving and they're in a business of some sort I take them outside or I go to the restroom I don't discipline them you know out in public in the thing for everybody else to see and hear and my son was having a moment and I'm just like you know normally I would say we're leaving I'm not gonna sit here in this store or in this restaurant and have you you know so if you can't hold it together we're gone and that would usually get them to be right with whatever needed to be done well I wasn't in a position I could actually just leave the store uh, I just needed to grab a few things and he was just crying <sighs> and I'm like, I'm like you know what at this point I'm sorry we were in an aisle I was trying to find something like I said it was 10 items or less and I'm out and this woman walks past me and as she's going down the aisle, gets to the other side, and this was back when the, the aisles were really, really, really long for the whole store. And she turns around and goes, you better get a handle of that before it becomes a problem. And I'm like, okay, so I kept having all these incidences of where other people were telling me my kids were behaving badly in public. And I don't know what to say has changed, but like 15 years ago, there was this woman with six kids who just, they were unruly and beyond belief. And she's like, that's how kids behave. You just got to deal with it. And that has been the sentiment of pretty much a lot of people around that anytime there's a problem and you go get your kids in order, I'm being told this is how kids are. And I'm kind of going, wait a minute, how can it be both sides? How is that when I was a parent that me not disciplining my kids was a bad thing and that everyone tells me I need to you know straighten up and fly right but nowadays as a grandmother I'm being told that children acting ruly and being outside hey they're outside so they can be as loud as they want 
So there's this group of kids, uh, and the latest group is mostly girls. So they start off at this really high octave that is at, at a screaming level. How they talk to each other. They're talking at each other. And so they're escalating up to the point where I feel like my ears are bleeding. The, the, the octave of this high-pitched squealing. Mm -hmm. So i really like to know in the comments, you know, am I wrong? <laughs> and which section am I wrong on? Uh, so, they've been out there for about an hour. And uh, at this point... <sighs> hopefully they'll go away soon. So, I'm just saying, up front, I'm rattled and frazzled because your nervous system is not meant for that. Screaming babies are meant for mothers to be able to address and calm down the child. And when you're constantly hearing screaming that's not your kid and you can't do anything about it, and there's where the anxiety comes from. That and from trauma. And we're dealing with the trauma stuff. That's pretty much, you know, if I don't have to deal with the outside stuff of the stupid people doing the stupid things, we'd be much happier. But hey, life is where we're at. We have to deal with what we have to deal with. So I apologize for being part of the Misery Loves Company Club moment. And uh, we'll get to the doing of the video. And hopefully I won't be dropping and forgetting things and all that neat stuff. Now, I had an, a vision, an idea in my head I wanted to create. There was a look I'm going for. I'm going to tell you, nine times out of ten, I will look at a plate. I will look at some sort of inspiration or have an idea and what I want to create and what the end result is never the same. It just never, I'm telling you, it's like the telephone game. None of it follows along <coughs> with what I'm doing to get what I wanted. I end up with something else. See, and there's, I don't know if you heard that, slamming of the gate, like slam, 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 in and out, in and out. In, Hydrate, drink your water. I'm trying not to be crabby. So I did this on my nails. I have not done this on, you know, something else to kind of show you <coughs> the process. And when I explain it, it's kind of going to be wild. So essentially, you want to do your nail design polish on, um, on your stamper and let it dry. Now this one I did several days ago. I was working on something else and I thought, hey, let me try. And so I don't know how well how well they're gonna come apart on this, but even if they crumble and disintegrate, then that's okay too. And so the color I'm using is Kraken B482. This is a lovely shade. I've got Bam White. I have uh, one of the newer polishes is a uh, Yellow Brick Road P164. Um, I don't remember what that one is. I want to say it was um, like Twinkle Toes or something. And I don't remember. That's not Kraken, but it's something else similar. So there's that. And then the, pol the powders I have, I don't know if these are still available. This one is the Red of Hearts or Red something that, that came with the... Um, I don't know if it was the Wizard of Oz or Alice in Wonderland, but it's it's one of those ones. This one, I think, is being discontinued, but I don't know. This is Blaze, so if you get it while you still can. And then uh, this one, I want to say, is Wicked, is the green. So there's that. And this is pretty much all I did to be able to kind of create this. Um, and like I said... I'm trying to recreate from memory because what I have originally envisioned to do didn't happen. And then you need some sort of clear top coat or base coat or something of that nature. And I have base coated this. And then you're going to need a pair of scissors, a pair of tweezers would be helpful, and maybe, you know, your other little tool along the way, and um, a pot or something that you can put the nail polish remover in, and, um, and there you go. So at this point, I like I said, I did already um, coat this with the, the base top coat situation. And then um, 
you're going to take the polish that you have. See if I can get it off here. And if it doesn't come off in one sheet, that's okay. Because you're going to end up cutting it up. That's what the scissors are for. So we have that pulled up into strips. And there we go. So now I'm going to turn this along that edge so I can get to it. And then I'm going to take these lovely happy scissors and I'm just going to create little tiny lines, little tiny sections of pieces. Long lines if possible. But if not possible, that's okay. There's always... I don't know if that's picking up on the camera. I don't know if you can hear in the background that screech. Yeah, that's the low level. That's where they start at. And I'm doing this over a piece of paper because I found it quite difficult to get it off of the silicone backing. It wanted to stick more than it wanted to move. So it was like super frustrating. So I'm doing it over paper. So hopefully they'll be easier to get up when I need them to. Oh, they're just not coming off the scissors. Now oh, they're sticking. Okay, so there's that. So now I have all the pieces that I need. Oh, I'm going to trim that one a little bit. If I can get a hold of it. Because you want these as thin as possible. It's kind of like in cooking. You can always add more, but you, if sometimes you get too much, taking it away, not so easy. So I found the thinner the better. And I don't know why, why or how I thought to do this. It was just like I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but I didn't want to do it the typical way. And then all of a sudden my brain just kind of went, and I went, oh, you know what? Let's try that. So I did not see this. I did not see anybody else do this. So if somebody else is doing it out there, I'm not copying them because I didn't know that they did it. So I don't know if I invented this or if just inspiration is, you know, hitting multiple people, but there you are. So I got that all off. Now, um, you do want to have something tacky or sticky. So even though I've top coated this, I'm still going to put more on because it needs to be wet. Because guess what? We're going to stick those pieces on it. And basically where I was going with this is I kind of wanted like a halo effect and I didn't feel like dragging out the spongies to kind of, you know, get that illumination around the edges. So basically you just kind of stick it there and put it down. And again, you're just using pieces to like fill in the puzzle 
because we're framing around the nail. And don't worry about if it's not perfect or lined up because I have a solution for that as well. I hope you can see this. Maybe if I zoom in a little bit more. And see, this is why it's th the thinner is the better because you're just going around the edge. And if there's places you want to fill in, you can always do that with little pieces. But hey, if you want thicker lines, then you do you, boo. The world is your pickle. You go, and I heard someone else say that, and I don't remember who it was. And I've never been able to figure out to go back to find out where her channel was. So when I figure it out, I'll give her credit. I liked it and I'm I stole it. I'm borrowing it. I'm using it. I'm not claiming it as mine because I didn't I didn't think thunk of it. She does a cooking channel. And it popped up in my feed and I've never been able to figure out where to go back to. Because I don't think it was one that I was subscribed to. Because I don't really do cooking channels. I mean, I watch a few of them here and there when they pop up. There's a cute, few cute ones that are entertaining that I'll watch every now and then. But most of the time it's like, yeah, okay, I wouldn't do it that way. And you're, you're, I'm looking at the, for me... I've always wanted to eliminate the steps in cooking. I want something fast, quick, and easy, and I want it tasty. And some of these, they they, they, they do these steps that you just kind of like going, why, when you could have just cut out five things in there? It just makes... And then the other thing that bugs me, and I, I know it's a pet peeve, and I'm sorry to, sorry to be all cranky and crabby about this, but <laughs> I, I watched content creators, and they'll be like, and then you go ahead, and then we're gonna go ahead, and go ahead, and you can go ahead. And there was one I counted that in a video that was less than 10 minutes, she said, go ahead, or you can go ahead, or we're gonna go ahead, or some formulation of that, something like 15 times. Like, at every step, it was like, really? Really? So, yeah, no, I don't, I don't watch those because they It bugs me. It bugs me how people make things harder. I want to help, but I can't. I can't solve it. I can't fix it. I can't do it. And so I just... I watch happy things. Or at least I try to. The world is too angry. I grew up in way too much anger. Not just for me. Not just mine, but I grew up around other people that were way too angry. Many, many people who are way too angry. And you see how that blurred? That's kind of what we're going we're gonna to do. Yeah, they were way too angry and I couldn't get away from it. And I couldn't eliminate it. And I couldn't resolve it. And ah. so there's that. So I, I just... I really want to be happy, but I know happiness is not a process a, a possibility. Happiness is something that is a moment. Enjoy it. It's fleeting. It, it'll come and go just like the bad things. They come and go. You're, you're looking for, uh, not mediocrity. What's the other, the other word? Um, you're looking for things to be at an even keel where it's just kind of like you're not happy, you're not sad, you're content. You're looking for contentment. I'm good. 
I have food to eat, roof over my head. Uh, I, I'm comfortable in my temperature. See, and now we're just blurring this out. Blurring it towards the center. And when I did this on my nail, a lot of this would flood into the middle. So it had this eerie, weird kind of m muted effect to it that made it look like I had a base because it all kind of flooded in. So yeah, you're looking for contentment, peace and calm to allow your nervous system to settle because living in the city with city noise is very disruptive to the nervous system. Even if you don't have screaming heebie-jeebies, just the mere fact, and they've done studies on this, that you know, listening uh, regularly, uh, being being where ongoing open traffic is, you know, with just the cars whooshing by, and the the the, the honking and the the clunking and all the things that go along with traffic, and then in addition to that, there are a lot of people who like to play their music way too loud. Way, way, way too loud. And so you kind of have all that disruption and those sounds mess with your nervous system. You know, that whole fight or flight kind of thing. So there's that. And then if you got any type of construction or subways or other things that are even more loud, it just goes on top. It's kind of like that movie, um, My Cousin Vinny, where he was out in all in, out in public, or he was out in the country, and he couldn't sleep. Night after night, there was something that was keeping him awake. And at one point, the judge got pissed off at him and put him in jail. And with all the the screaming and the sounds and the sirens and all the stuff happening inside the jail which is kind of funny because if this is a small town how do you have so many hardened criminals making all kinds of ruckus but all right but that's where he was able to go to sleep it's because it was like home whereas being in, in the city and all the stuff around that that the super quiet or the the train coming through in the middle of the night was just too much too much quiet so We've kind of muted that in the middle. There. So next I wanted to have um, the sparkle and shine of the... That's it. I wanted to have the sparkle and shine of the, um, the glitters. And so I was kind of putting that on. It wasn't rubbing it on. I was just kind of tapping it in. Just little accents of color that we wanted to add to this to be all sparkle and pretty. To give the shimmer shimmer. And then um, I wanted to have like a spider web be in the center there that I wanted to have like the gold. So I was just going to put this on and to be just the dot in the center, but it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to be and it kind of got mucked up. So then I was going to put the, um, the web in the BAM white and that didn't kind of work out the way I wanted it to do. Um, so I put more of the gold over the top and that kind of changed it a little bit. So then I had to put more of the the shimmer on top and so then it got to be super 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 quick thick. I was kind of going for this clear part down here. I really wanted that to show through and not a lot of that actually did end up showing through. Um, so basically though, there's, that's kind of the building of it. Oh, wait, I almost forgot the, the green. 
Got to put the pretty pretty on. So that can then be your base and then you can stamp over whatever shades that you can find of a, a contrasting color to I just kind of think that's cool in the like the hologram or the the windows or you know something to something that you know it gives you a different effect and if you're just not feeling it in the stamping mode or if you don't have something you know that you want to stamp that'll give you some artwork you could put some rhinestones and other things on top and just kind of build that up and keep going but that just turned out to be kind of fun and I just thought woohoo and then I got some comments about how people liked it and someone wanted to know what I used so I just figured you know what instead of trying to explain it in words it'd be easier for everybody to watch the video and have the explanation um, uh, be in the demonstration style and and, and again I, I'm I'm sorry really sorry for being the, 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 the crabby Gus <laughs> just <sighs> this is why I say be kind be kind and think about the things you do and be the best human you can possibly do because there's there's way too much animosity and angry uh, conflict out there when you know and and as I was saying you know they've done studies with the um, being ex exposed and having a lot of exposure to outside sounds that it can affect your heart it can cause heart problems and arrhythmia and there's research to how all of this extra noise and stress of just being living in a city is contributing to people having heart related issues and factors and the anxiety level that people don't people don't even know why they're they're anxious is because they have all this stuff around them and it's kind of like if you take uh, in in science where they do experiments and you take neutrons and potrons and you know all the other things and you you put in the energy in there and they're excited it, it's kind of like um uh, mix, you know, cornstarch or baking soda and water and have it be a very thick slurry. You put it under a, in, in, you put that mixture in a Ziploc bag or zipper type bag and put it over a speaker and watch it dance. It becomes liquidy and moves. It, sound vibrations have a huge effect on us. And well, there's that. So that's why that's a part of the reasons there's, there's other psychological reasons that, that it all kind of overlaps and inner buries into things of why I believe people are behaving the way that they are uh, and why meditation is becoming a necessity that you have to find a place to be able to calm out all that down. And there's far too many people who either as a kid uh, and now uh, didn't know and now as an adult are being diagnosed with some form of attention deficit, learning difficult, hyperactivity things. And there's far too many kids that are being diagnosed with that. Well, it's because, to be honest, gate, um, is to be honest where you have someone who has all this stuff going on in them and then they're, you know, incubating and marinating a human and they're getting all of that chaos imbued into them while they're in utero. Moms are not calm. They, they have to go to work. They're stressed out. They, you know, they have so many things they have to do and deal with um, that all of that, they, they don't get to have a, a peaceful and happy pregnancy. There's just too much being thrown at them. And then you end up with a kid that can't regulate because mom can't regulate, dad can't regulate, the family can't regulate. So then everybody gets doused with some form of drugs to help regulate. And then it causes a disruption and... Uh, I'm gonna, just gonna, I don't want this to be a tangent. Anywho, th this is why I say, please be kind. Be kind to those around you. 
because you do not know what somebody else is going through. You do not know what your neighbor might be experiencing, that then your behaviors are contributing to them being uncomfortable or having, you know, mental, emotional, physical, physical problems because your behavior is causing them issues. Polite, politeness and manners and respect do belong in our society. And so many people have forgotten how or were never taught how. Anyway, again, I apologize for the crabby gust. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope the technique is something that you, you uh, either find fascinating and interesting and want to try or, you know, in the future, you know, can lead you to do creating other things for you and finding your happy zen, all that wonderful stuff. Be the best human you can possibly be. Um, don't let those who are in the Misery Loves Company Club recruit you. I'm not trying to recruit you. And again, I'm sorry if that, you know, went down that road. See, I keep telling you, I'm a recovering, uh, a recovering member because I, I grew up in that mindset of the household. That's the way everybody was. And sometimes it's not easy to get out of that. So you have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, liking, sharing is caring. Have a wonderful day. Bye.